Hello Nigeria, hello Africa. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufuo Ezaga. Today we're going to be talking about basketball. And, you know, of course, when we talk on this program, we talk mostly looking at the local industry. Sports is big business. I can't say that enough. All right, today we're going to be talking basketball. We all saw basketball at the Olympics. We saw what our girls did at the, at the Olympics, the Tigers, how they beat Australia, how they beat Canada, and how they reached the quarterfinals of the Olympics for the very first time, becoming the first African team to do so. And one thing you'd agree is that basketball is actually a very exciting sport. It's a very TV-friendly sport, and it's a sport that is popular across Nigeria. So the question is, why have we not made any commercial success of basketball in this country? What do we need to do to turn basketball into a big sport in Nigeria? Today in the studio, I'm going to have two guests, and both of them are very, you know, um, experienced in the game. First is Mr. Babs Ogunade, who is the vice president of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. He goes back a long, long way when it comes to football. And mm -hmm. at 17, uh, sorry, when it comes to basketball, at 17, he was already playing basketball for Nigeria. All right? And then also on the program is veteran sports journalist, Mr. Pius Aino. Mr. Aino has covered basketball for many, many years, and he has great insight into what happens in basketball, in the basketball industry, not just in Nigeria, but across the world. So we're going to be talking to both of them. And like I said, today is the basketball edition, more, more or less. And um, I'd like to encourage you to invite a friend or two to be part of, the, of this program. And so I'm going to give you about a minute to do that, uh, to just you know, uh, finish up what you're doing and settle down to this discussion that we, we are going to have because I can assure you that it's going to be one insightful hour. So we're going, to, we're, we're going to, on a short break, and when we return in about a minute, the business begins. You're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Orufo Ezag. And we're reaching you from Plus TV Africa and our, and our studios in Lagos, in Victoria Island, Island, Lagos, Nigeria. So we're going to be talking basketball today. And in the studio with me is Mr. Babs um, Ogunale, who is the vice president of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. Like I said, he's been in basketball for over maybe 50 years or so, you know, so he's been there, he's done that, he knows what he's talking about, all right? But the question is, why have we not made basketball a, a big sport in Nigeria, regardless, you know, in, you know given the, the tailwinds that, that the sport has in this country? But before we get right into the meat of that, I'm going to first of all ask uh, Mr. Ogunade how the Olympics went, how the, the Tigress, uh, the Tigress, uh, performed and you know what to expect you know in general from basketball in Nigeria going forward. Hello Mr. Ogunade, welcome to the program. Good afternoon. So yeah, how, we Nigerians you know were inspired by um, the Tigress. Rightly so. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. They, they did what a lot of people did not expect. They beat Australia, True. they beat Canada. I for one thought that they weren't coming out with any win at all in that group. You know, but here we are. They are, they excelled. You know, so tell me, what what um, has your federation gotten from that? What's what's um, you know what's the way forward for basketball in Nigeria? Now um, they have been one of the most successful teams uh, for us. Okay, the men who have done well, like I mean, as you probably as you're aware. The men qualified for the last Olympics in Tokyo, mm. but they failed to do that this time around. But the girls have gone again to qualify, mm. and they've gone to, I mean, um, achieve much more than most people even thought they would achieve. Okay. Um, what does that say for basketball? It encourages us as basketball stakeholders the federation, he encourages us to do more, 
um, to invest more in the game, not just for the women, also for all across. Now, like I said, I mean, uh, basketball has the singular opportunity of not just being a sport. In basketball, there's music, there's fashion, there's um, the sport itself, there's, there's, there's entertainment. Oh, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of things in basketball. So we did, and we have not even exploited that at all. So that's what we, that, that, uh, what we need to do going forward. Okay, so I imagine that your federation, seeing how Nigerians reacted to, to these girls, would um, probably just jump on that opportunity to get to sponsors and other partners. Uh, do you have any such plans uh, in the works? Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. But um, we need to get on the, on the, on the, um, the success, as we speak, of the girls right now. Mm. But beyond that, the economy is on the downturn here. Mm. And that's not, I mean, that's not an excuse. Mm. There are about 44 federations odd mm. going to the market to look for sponsors mm. for their sports. Mm. So beyond winning the league, beyond qualifying for the Olympics, the federation needs to come up with the critical document whereby the sponsors can see the value adds. Mm. Up until then, it's going to be a tall order. But, but some would say that's your federation that should do it. Or do you have, are you working with um, um, external organizations that, that, that help organize federations like yours to capture opportunities like this and articulate them in such a way that sponsors? There are, there, yes, there are structures in place mm. to do these things. Like the committees by the constitution of the federation. M MBBF. The committees are there to do these things. Mm. But... I think it's about time we, we actually look outwards Beyond, yeah. to see the people whose job it is to actually raise funding mm. for sports. Mm. The, the, I mean, the, the, there's a plethora of all of these people out there. Mm. So we need to actually critically engage them and ask them what they can do. Because see, when we do, when we do what we do, mm. there, there's a bit of emotion attached to it. But the guys outside... It, for them, it's about business. It's about what they can raise yeah. and what they can do. Get so I think at this point, we need to actually look out, outwards to ask people whose job it is to raise funding for us to do our work. Okay. Uh, you see, I've spoken to a few um, sports property builders or asset managers, and they too have... I've heard them say that, look, in the past, we engaged marketing companies, and maybe the results were not... Uh, no, fantastic. That is you know, true. Do you understand? We, we have had. Do you have, we have that experience. That's yeah. That is very. That is uh, that is correct. We have had uh, engagements with um, this sort of company before. Yeah. And I mean, if I, I mean, if I use the word, they just wasted our time. Just wasted our time. But I think, but but like I said, I mean, we have to continue to engage other people. Yeah. To because that's what we need to do. Yeah. We need to find people who are trustworthy, who know their onions, mm. who can raise funding for us. Because mm. let me tell you, it is the normal refrain, government cannot sponsor this thing alone. And that's the honest truth. Yeah, yeah. Government can't do it alone. Mm. So we need to put up our socks and work towards also finding funding to support the government to, I mean, to succeed. Okay. There's bas when I think about basketball in Nigeria, yeah? You know, I see a sport, great potential, but the pieces are all over the place, mm. right? And maybe um, you need to, we're, we're going to talk about, you know, um, different aspects of, the, you know, what tailwinds there are, what headwinds there are. We'll, we'll talk about, in fact, I'll put up a few slides when the time's right. But the point is, you, you, you need to have something, some sort of like a compelling vision that you know all of the stakeholders understand and, and buy into. So everybody knows where they, they fit in. The media knows when they, where, where they fit in. The, the, the administrators know where they fit in. The government knows where it fits in and all of that. Do you have any such 
a document that's a bit like a pathway to the future? Do you have any such thing that, um, do you have a, a vision that your organization, your federation has crafted? You know, because it's very critical. Um, a vision, yes. Mm. Now, the conveyor belt mm. of all of the successes mm. is the local league. Mm. Now, what we have done is to put in structures. Let's say, look, everybody loves the MBA. Everybody loves how, I mean, how they, there's a walkthrough, mm. how, how they do things properly. Yeah. They're not magicians. What we also need to do, and we are putting that structure, is to look for ways and means to do all of these things. We have looked at it. There's a, docu there's a document in place. Mm. And also, there's a document in place where there's a pathway to success. But are do you, the, the other stakeholders, are they aware of this? Are they, do you have their buy-in? Because that's very critical also to... to so that you all pull in the same direction. I, I hear you. Yeah. Largely, yes, largely. You know, there can be a few dissenting voices here and there, mm. and there are. And this happens across all sports. Mm. Everybody is, everybody has a feeling of self-importance mm. regarding who has done what for whom. Mm. You understand? Mm. But hey, we can't all be at this spot at the same time. Mm. Some people who will be there to lead mm. and their vision must be big enough good enough and all compelling enough to carry everybody along mm. if i recall one of the problems you guys you guys had a big deal at some point you know where i think it was quasi tv that was supposed to have given you a lot of money you know uh, <laughs> is this something is this something you guys uh, prepared to talk about? I mean, where, 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 we were not, what, what, we were not what happened of, with that deal? I, trust me, I'm not aware of, I mean, we were not aware, I mean, we were not a part of the deal. So, uh, the deal was the, was signed by the Federation, uh, the Federation before 2017. That was like $12 billion, million dollars or one point something. Something in that region. Yeah, 12 million. And they got million. paid. They got, the they got, well, they got, got well, I mean, I think they, they the money was going to be paid in tranches. Mm. And I think the first tranche or second tranche was paid to that federation. We had no part mm. in it. We didn't, we, we heard, we have a document, mm. but um, that's as far as that went. Okay. So let's take, let's take a short break. Yeah. And, and when we return, we're going to be talking about so much more. Like I said, we're going to be looking at the tailwinds and we're going to be looking at the headwinds facing basketball in Nigeria. And um, with Pius joining, we'd have a, a fuller uh, d a debate um, sure. um, um, on, on the issue, all right? So like I said, let, just a minute. We're going to go on a short break. And when we return, the business begin continues, sorry. You're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Orufo Izaga. And in the studio with me, I've been talking to the Vice President of the Nigerian Te Basketball Federation, mm. Mr. Babs Ogunwade, joining us to, to bring more, more meat to the, the discourse is um, Mr. Pius Ayino, a veteran journalist who's, been co who's covered basketball um, for years and years and, and has very many insights that I'm sure he's going to he's going to live with us today in the in the in, in this in this session. Welcome to the program, Pius. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so I was talking to um, I was talking to the VIP about basketball. Uh, you know, he says we talked about um, the Tigress and the progress that they made during the Olympics. Uh, I, I followed you on Twitter, and I know that you enjoyed their 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 success. What do you think? Do you think it's a, it's a good thing for basketball in Nigeria? Do you see, do you see this as um, moving Nigeria, Nigerian basketball forward? Uh, yes, and more than, more, more than uh, what we ever expected. It's a very good one for us. My only challenge is, what do we do after that? Mm. You, you know, a lot of records were set. You know, as the team was moving, the coach was also setting records. So mm. it was a, two things. We're going up. Mm. A woman for the first time, a team crossing to that level for the first time, 
she get into that level for the first time. So for everything, it was first for mm. the team. Mm. The good thing about what happened uh, in Paris is that, look, for a long time, way back from 2017, coming back, these ladies, this team, mm. they've proven to the whole continent and even to the world that they don't belong to this level anymore, to that mm. level. They have gone to the world level. But despite the performance at the World uh, Cup in uh, Spain, when they got to the quarter final, they were still seen as being a lower team. Mm. But they've gone to this level now to prove that they can face anything, any team across the world. This team has changed and changed players, new players, new players. But still, when they went for the all of uh, Afro basket, I heard some, some people call them as a uh, Nigeria team, not team B. Nigeria team C. Mm. Because when they looked, they didn't see one, they didn't see two, they didn't see three, four, they said, ah, this is team C, ah, mm. we'll beat this people. They defeat everybody. I'm so happy that it happened with these people. They have been pre set out, but the level they have reached now, I'm not, I don't know when an African team will be there, the way they are going. Okay, cool. So here's the thing, yeah. We have this team. There was just one locally based player, one locally groomed player yeah um, okay i see you shaking your head were there more players yes yeah. all right like can you give us examples so that we, we know we if we are okay okay played in first bank for okay. several years yeah that's one of the stars that's yes that's of the game that. played with the uh, air force up until what last year okay well, so those are two yes okay so for me the question is you see sports there's sports on the national th team level. Yeah. Then there's sports as a countrywide commercial success. In one case, you, you just show up at major international tournaments, you play, and that's it. In the other case, you create a vibrant countrywide industry from the grassroots to the elite levels of competition. All right? Can you st what I struggle with is, yeah, we, we've made progress, we've, we've, we've reached the quarterfinals, how does this impact on the local industry? How does this lead us to develop the local industry? Because the local industry is the commerce. You see, Ken, the, the, what I've always explained about these uh, home-based players, international players, playing this. They bring players, everybody, 30 players, 25, 30, 40 to a camp. The coach is not looking at the person from Lagos is not looking at the person from New York, he's mm. not looking at the person from Tokyo. Yep. He puts them, I want the best player. Mm. If four of them from Lagos, from the league, are better than the rest, of course, they go first. Mm. Because the coach wants to win. So he's going to pick the best. You see, when you begin to do, I must carry one home, I must carry two, I must take people from here. It you means that you're already, you're, already making, okay. you're already going to play okay, so, eight man thing. Okay, so let me hear what the... the, the, the now, to say, yeah. the job of the Federation, particularly that of the Tenga Committee, mm. is to allow everybody who carries the passport of Nigeria mm. a, chance. a chance to play for Nigeria. Mm. So just, I mean, just to buttress what uh, Pius just said, mm. Our job is cut and dried. Mm. We want the very best. Now, let me tell you, the Olympics, the World Cup, these are not in town sports. Mm. We have, we, we want the very best uh, 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 players who carry the Nigerian passport to represent Nigeria. So, we, so we need to be putting our best foot forward oh, okay. all the time. Okay, so. Again, earlier, I recall that I asked the question about the vision for basketball in this country. Pass, look, I understand what you guys are saying. I understand you take your, your best players to a competition, yeah? But well, here's the challenge, yeah? What's the vision? Is the vision to be the, the best basketball playing nation in Africa when it comes to national representation? or the vision is to build a basketball industry in Nigeria. Because depending on what your objective is, your best player sometimes might be, some people might say, we want to, if I want to build an industry in Nigeria, I'll tell you that you have to make sacrifices. Hmm? 
you can say, you know what, over the next 25 years, we need to build an industry. And then you say, you know what, as part of building that industry, we have to have local representation. You know why? Because local representation is then what creates the popularity within the country that brings in millions of fans that then attracts sponsorship on a week by week basis. So you could choose and say, you know what, let's shine at the Olympics and let the local industry. Why, why not do a bit of both? You, you can, you can Abs do both. Absolutely. So, so like in Europe, for instance, yeah. what they do is basically focus on local industry because it is money for them. Yeah. Because that's where the money is, right? Uh, that's where the TV rights are. That's where the merchandising is and all of that. Do you understand? Uh, different teams making a lot of money. So, my, so really, it boils down to, in my view, what you consider the, the overarching, object, overarching ob objective that you have. Yeah? I, I, I think every federation, at least, I've, I've been part of the system for yeah. some time now. So, sorry, but while you're, while you're answering, recall that the same thing, so we have the same problem with football in Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. You have a league, and your top players in the league don't get any attraction. If that happens, then the fans don't see why they should follow your league in the first place. Yeah. You understand? I, so, I, how do we get out of I, this? I, I, will, I will also explain to you mm. something. I've been in the camp. Let's mention football a little. Mm. I've worked in the camp of the football team mm. for the home race Eagles mm. as a media person. Okay. So, I work with the players. Mm. Now with the players, calls are coming in. Calls are coming in. Mm. As soon as you wear the jersey of Nigeria, more calls begin to come. Mm. The same thing with basketball. You see, once these players get to a certain level, mm. they are shipped out. Mm. People are with people are watching them every day. Mm. They are shipped out. Mm. You can't pin them down. If you pin them down and say, okay, let's stay here so that we'll have home base players playing here, it's like you're killing the career of the player. Mm. So once they get to a certain level, they move. Overseas. Yes. Yeah. We have had people play for the men's team, the same mm. thing. Once they move for the basketball, once they play one, two, they are in Europe. Yeah. So it's difficult to tie these people down. So mm. the only thing the Federation has to do now is look, these people are back. Let us build the the, the, sponsor, the league we have for the women. Let's keep it, let's maintain this momentum. That's why, for me, by this time, we should have a program for female basketball. Yes, the league starting when it's going to start. Yeah. And then, when these people are available, we'll find a way of tying them around. But credit to them, Muja played yeah. there. Locally. I know, yes. And mm -hmm. I watched her last year. There's another player who becomes tough now and, and came. Which I means, mean, which means, it is possible to do. Now, this is not discounting the players that are Nigerian who are overseas. I think maybe the point some of us try to make is this: federations, and please, um, you, you know, you are here to explain this thing. And th this is the, the view some people have: that fe federations are abdicating their responsibilities because there's a quick fix, and the quick fix is. Go abroad, bring Nigerians born there, let them come and play. But what do you have to say about that? Is, that is not uh, correct. Now, mm -hmm. the league last year, mm -hmm. the league two years ago, three years ago, mm -hmm. produced teams that want to play in Bao. Mm -hmm. Some of these players, uh, most of those players play here. They play locally mm -hmm. in Royal mm -hmm. Rivers, yeah. in, um, in um, Quarra Falcons, yeah. in Customs. No, they all play here. They all play here. But, but the here's the thing about Baal. It's a good thing you raised that, by the way. Leave Rivers Hoopers were our champions. Yes. They and then they went to, Yeah. They won the local league. And then they went to Baal. Yes. And played with... With... The, 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 no, the, with the, the mercenaries. No, 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 it's not mercenary. That's not true. It's See, the structure, yeah, the structure of the Baal League. Mm. Now, don't forget that the Baal, the BAL, mm. are mm. trying to market... They are only also. Mm. So they have a structure. Mm. Now, they're on TV, they're on, they're, on, they're, on, they're on social media. So what they want to do is uh, project their and market their, their own lead. So they have a structure whereby you are allowed to bring in players from XYZ to strengthen your team. Mm. Don't, now, forget, don't, now don't, don't forget that 
your your local champions have now are now playing in an international league, mm. not your local league. Mm. So the 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 the, the um. The so market, it's just like a temporary market, arrangement no, 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 to do. No, no, no. The market there, yeah. I mean, the, the, the market they're feeding mm. there is different from your local league. Yeah. So it's a different thing entirely. Mm. So, so they are they're play, they uh, playing to the structures and it's their team to the structure of Bal. Oh, so let me see. Bal is about, it's not about Af really African it is. basketball. It is, but see, they have a structure. Mm. They are promoting their league. Mm. Now, what they have told the, uh, the NBA, because it's the NBA and mm. FIBA together, they said, look, you know what? The African champions, the champions in every league mm. come together to play in there. Now, there are 12 teams all in. Yeah. There are six pre-qualified nations, yeah. Nigeria inclusive. Mm. So, at, so we don't need to play the, uh, the qualifying mm. leagues for that. So we have so there are six teams, six countries, or six teams who are pre-qualified for that. Oh, so, but you can only play with NBA players, is that? You no, can only... no, 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 local players, but you must strengthen them so as, so as not to um, make the league substandard. Yeah, I know, I know. There's, okay, so yeah, there's, yeah. There's a quality they want to go. Sometimes I also look at the federation and uh, pity them. You know, the people who are marketing the sponsors, mm. the truth is, they want some big names here mm. and there. People are already established. Mm. But not a that bad thing. They want people that somebody can see and identify with. They want a player they can identify with. They want to market some things. Mm -hmm. So they would rather bring somebody who has maybe played one year, one season in NBA, that the name can sell. One person who has played for the Tigers, that the name can sell. That's why they want at least like three, four people that are not in the local league that you can bring from outside your local league. Mm -hmm. They're also trying to do. Where I hold the federation culpable, it's starting the men's league. Mm. Yes, I know those uh, cases, drag of we are in charge, we are not in charge. It really touched them, it touched marketing of Nigerian basketball because wherever you go, they are almost like a two, two federation thing mm. one getting backing from the back, from the other. So it affected them. But now that this case is over, I think. Uh, we we'll have to double our effort and see whatever we can do to start something <coughs> on the ground. Especially with this women too. There's people already have sponsors. True. Yes. So before the fire dies down hmm. from the outing in Paris, can we get something to start? No, 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 no. Even these players are let me, let me assure you. Let us quick ask something. When some of these our tigers hmm. players are around, whatever it will cause when they are around, to also show up. Hmm. We already have models to copy. NBA is there, WNBA is there. Entertainment attracts people. When we were doing the entertainment for the men's league, it brought the whole Nigeria to and, As a matter of fact, what he has just said, and what we said before that, you know, he was responding to the bad situation. So now I, I, I look at you and say, why don't you do the same? With, uh, with the basketball league in Nigeria, for instance? What do you mean? We why don't there? you, like you said now, you, you bring in um, what is in a who we pay. So, so <laughs> see, see the thing is, if you if it's something like when India were, were building the IPL, yeah. they had to go out and bring in people to 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 beef up. And do you understand? There's a robust marketing department. Yeah. 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 Who we will pay will be determined by whether you are willing to seek investors. Yeah. To be part of the project, uh, you know who, who who generally takes charge because look at um, um, football in Nigeria. GTI is on board doing stuff, right? Yeah. If you are, if you approach investors and says and say, you know what, this is what we want to do. We want to bring members of the the Tigress. Want to bring them to play. It, it, it may not even be the full season. It may just be that in, in in one season in three games, you know, we can bring. Five or six of the players join with our local teams. Oh, this is a very good idea. have a contract outside. You've already tied down to a contract outside. It's difficult for, for you to come in. You know, these things are not even. Yeah. Trust me, I, the, the thing that has not escaped us at all. Yeah. yeah. But you see, like Tara said, you see, these things, it's not about who is paying for, uh, who is paying for what. Yeah. Now, for instance, we have a sponsor for the Female League. Mm. The Female League will be up and running in the next. 
couple of uh, weeks. Then I, then I can assure you because we have a sponsor. The main, the main, the, the main league to kick in in the next couple of weeks. Mm. What I'm saying, what, what Paris can attest to is the fact that we have a, a, a sponsor for the female league. But how much money when you win the female league? How much is the money that you get? Mm. Do you understand? See, that determines the attraction for the players. Yeah. Who uh, they want to invite yeah. to come and play for you? Okay, we are going to consider about funding. Okay, funding is very critical. It's critical, yeah. but you know, um, as a matter of fact, I'd like to put up. A, a, we're going to continue with all of this, yeah. but maybe to have a structured um, um, debate or discourse, I'd like to put up two slides. Okay, one we'll be talking about the tailwinds that uh, the industry has or faces and then we'll, the other will be talking about the the headwinds for instance now we have basketball what are the what are the points the good points for basketball it's it's a sport on a global level that is top 10 in the world you know across any any uh, measurement you see on the on the internet yeah in nigeria there's nationwide publicity uh, sorry popularity it's, number, it's the number two sport in this country. Yeah. You know, like I tell people all this, time, I served in Jaws. It used to amaze me back then when in the evenings, people troop out to play basketball the way we come play football in, in the South. You know what I mean? So there is, South and North basketball is strong and they have strong teams, they have strong players and all of that. Yeah. You know, why are we not capitalizing on that? And, and that's, the, that's the second point. It's global top 10. Uh, popularity um, across the world. Please, can I have the slide up so that we can we can continue? Okay, so it's a fun sport. It's a middle class sport, you know, in Nigeria and, and in most countries for that for that. It's a, it's a good fun sport, middle class sport, and you know, it is great TV sport. You know, today in the world, if you want to make money from sport, television or streaming is what takes you to a global audience of eight billion people, and basketball makes you know um, amazing tv do you get so where where do you think why why are we not um, why are we not capitalizing on on this yet what do we need to do you know to capitalize on the popularity you can reach up to 50 million people in this country and that's a lot of money for you in terms of media rights you know it's a fun you can get the middle class audience more so than even football and then you know it's great tv as well pious um, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Gomadi, what do we need to do now? What what plans? How do we turn basketball into a commercial success in Nigeria? First, I don't want to go far. We've done a run with the men's league before, hmm. and we I, I remember when we went to Canada for the playoffs for the Savannah Conference. Hmm. The first day, hmm. yeah, we had a full call. The second day, they had to bring in the military to control the crowd. I mean, and the reason two things: mm. there was entertainment, and there were things you 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 relate with your local people. Yeah, the day. yeah. They were t-shirts, they yeah. were books, they were bags for kids, they were shirts for adults, and also some of these guys come, they they wore the same t-shirt back home. The next day, more people. Came. To, yes. So at the point, they had to control. The crowd. Before the league started, mm -hmm. before uh, Viewer Bike came into basketball, there was a test run done with the Wafu West African University mm -hmm. basketball. We went to ABU. The Viewer Bike people, managers, followed us to that place mm -hmm. because they were saying, is the team popular? Is it popular? The, the, league, the game was supposed to start around six. They had to delay to seven because the hall was. Feel up. So they had to delay, and one of the ex basketball people had to bring this huge screen that they had to mount outside. It wasn't so that people outside. could watch on so the outside. Yeah, people could watch. But by the time the league started, by the time the competition started, the match started, at least two people passed out. The crowd was too much. It was at that point that they, even the sponsors had to leave. But they, wow. before they left, they said, We will do basketball. And that was how they came in. Because they couldn't believe that. It was, it was that popular. popular. Yeah, the government was struggling to enter. And that's, that's the north that you, you yes. spoke of. But it's also popular in the south as the well. The same thing. For, v, for, for, v, Zenith, v, for Zenith, Zenith, I remember 
that when we were playing Vimova, one of the managers of Zenit came to look for me. So I told him I'll be at the stadium that Saturday. When he drove me to the stadium, the car park was free. You know, he had to go elsewhere to park. So he now asked me, any wedding around here? I said, no. He said, so what happened? I said, yeah, they are the basketball. Is there all these cars? Everybody came over. I said, yes. They said, uh, you want to use a Juro? Of course, when he peeped, when he put his head, the whole place was filled up. People were sitting, people were standing. The so same thing he said, what would you do? We have to go back to Mr. Ogunwade then. There was entertainment, everything. So the crowd is there, it's not a problem. The facilities are there. Apparently, I mean, something we can work with at least. So the, the, the trappings of a, of a successful commercial sport are all there. What is holding us back? Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, what I was just uh, said, I mean, I mean, I mean, I alluded to, is like the, the little squabbles here and there. Yeah. Mm. Look, no, at that point, when I was talking about, mm. we didn't have anything like this. Mm. Yeah, I agree. But the little squabbles here and there. Now, no corporate mm. wants to put his money yeah. where there is uh, rancor yeah. and confusion. And you see, that thing still hangs like a sort of double on, on the spot. Yeah. So, so up until, up and until we totally exercise that, mm. there's going to be a problem. You see, we're struggling. I mean, everybody knows that basketball, look, I mean, everything you said about basketball, you have not lied. But the fact is, if there is rancor here and there, nobody wants to get involved. The female team, because the, people, the, the bank has been servicing, I mean, they've been sponsoring us for several years. Mm. And I dare say, at some point, they, they almost pulled out because of all of this. Mm. But because of the um, contacts mm. that we had there, mm. they stayed with us. This is any bank. That is correct. That is correct. Maybe we should give them a bit of. Maybe we should give them some props. You know, we like we like Nigerian brands that sponsor yeah. our domestic. Zemin has been lost. Zemin there for. They've been lost for more than seventeen, eighteen years. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to give Zenith some props. And these are the kind of people that you, you, you want to, you want to uh, regardless of whatever it is that has been said about basketball, yeah, female, they have been there. Yeah, okay. They, they were with us when we went to uh, Spain, where the girls um, got to the quarterfinals, beating yeah. Greece, yeah. Argentina, and Turkey yeah. in uh, 2018. Yeah. They were since, they were with us from the, uh, the board of uh, um, Mr. Buba, yeah. you know, and, and they're still here, yeah. still with us. So, so see, here's where I want Zenit to, 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 see, this is how I want Zenit to be a part of basketball. You know, you guys have done great for basketball, you've, you've sponsored them, but there's so much more to the game that Zenit needs to look at. You know, maybe what we need to do now is to make, um, how do I put it, um, make a case to Zenit Bank and say, look, this is not just about corporate social responsibility. There is money to be made in sport. There's big business to be made in sport. So sometimes maybe what we need to do is get the banks like Zenith to then partner with organizations like, like, like um, or partner with the federations or private organizations to say, you know what, if there's money in basketball, how do we invest so that we, we, we then rake in the money? In that case, whatever social investment you're doing, whatever, that's what social investment is as opposed to philanthropy you know what are you doing how do we come in what do we need to put in here so that we can maximize the value of basketball in nigeria in that case you invest in basketball you make money from basketball and you grow the game as you have done successfully for the last uh, couple of decades does that props to zenith bank I, I i must say now so back to this thing uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, um, let's talk um, about the headwinds okay you, you're going to say yeah, because, i mean so much, there's some individuals who are Investing in uh, basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned one of them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, about uh, ten minutes ago. Yeah. He's he has he's been with bar, he's been with bar for since the inception. He's putting money in basketball. That's uh, Mr. Falawi. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, so so you see, the thing is, we have these guys here. We have guys like Falawi. 
We have a bank like Zeni Bank that's, that's, that's supporting the game. DSTV will be lost for about 10 years. Yeah, so there is something to work with, right? There's something to work with. Because basketball is such a big game in, in the world that there's absolutely, absolutely almost zero excuse why it's not, so, not a big commercial success in Nigeria, at least compete with football. But Pyle, before, hold your thought, before you would, because we're, we're running against time. Yeah. Let's look at the headwinds, because I think that's where we, we, we might come up with sort of insights that we can use to propel um, um, the game forward in Nigeria. Can we see the headwinds uh, facing basketball in Nigeria? Crippling management squabbles. Right, yeah. you you can Both of you have talked about that. You yeah. you say okay that that's been mitigated to a large extent uh, um, by moves that you have made in recent times, but out there people still see this as a big problem for basketball. Now there isn't. If you say there is a defined pathway to the future to success, but we don't know that. I, I doubt that you know. We know that. I don't know if you know. Pious. You are a big yeah. stakeholder. You know in that, you know that, that, yeah, in the media. That, that's where I'm coming now. Yeah. The, the media pattern mm. of the Federation now mm. has to adjust not the way it's being done now. There are things you do, even if you two, the hundred people over at the top yeah. that are squad with there, the media team need to always bring it back to cover those all of those and things. prepare the good things yes. and project yes. what's good yes. about you know yes. these people were playing in a uh, party mm. who said oh, oh no no ah they, they said players should not talk to anybody you can't interview Rena you can't but I had to complain ah I've tried to and I said okay on same day I said okay I will arrange interview for everybody mm. but it's not going to be individual who will do zoom and yeah, everybody yeah. and within four hours same day we were able to get Rena. Yes, we were able to get everybody and it was properly done. Mm. Everybody had the story, the thing about the chief and all that. They came from that mm. meeting. So if you grab the media mm. and let them take them away from whatever nonsense anybody say, mm. squeeze those ones out and project the thing so that the stories that come from there are not Stories about this going to the mm. and all that. Mm. Let mm. it be what it's on ground, mm. what is going to happen. Mm. I remember one thing, let me just quickly add this one. One little time I stayed on board, mm. the first time we were starting, and I told them, Puba was president then, I said, Look, gentlemen, if journalists are outside, they hear chairs flinging, mm. they peep, and somebody standing in the world. As if you like doing the meeting till 3 a.m., they will not go home, they will wait. Mm. If you are doing board meeting and the place is quiet and the people they see you gisting and drinking tea, they will go home. Because the bar still is self. Mm. So let's do this one. And for a long time, when the Federation president is sitting, I sit beside him for press conference. When you're supposed to stop, I the signal him when to stop and I take over. So that we don't give the wrong headline. Mm. That is the thing we have to work on. So that the stories that come will be more so, of our programs. So we have to manage media relations, yes, um, you know. I, I don't know what, you know, media these days is, there's a lot of it, the, 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 the bulk of it is social media. Yeah. And it requires a completely different set of skills True. today, you know. So it's something you guys have to look at. What do you have to say about, you know, media relations? Is it something that um, the, the Federation, how do you improve media relations going for, forward, do you think? I mean, that has been a death of, uh, well, that has been part of our problems, mm. media management. Mm. You see, the, like I said, the, 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 the persona of the media people now mm. is different from what we used to know. Mm. Everybody that can, can put together yeah, data right, suddenly writes, yeah, up, yeah. they get snippets of stories, yeah. they embellish it, yeah. and they, they let it fly. And the sad part is people who don't even understand <laughs> anything mm -hmm. and then watch onto it. Yeah. So right, so these days we have a lot of social media hoodlums. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not trying to, be, I mean, trying to derogate you. Well, all of them, they're all, yeah. they're all over the place. But but it works both ways actually. You know, you know what some property builders are doing today is this: if you can control the narrative on social media, right? If you bomb bombard the space, like he said, with positivity, and and you show 
you show you know um, examples good examples you can actually turn out of that and make through social media whatever game or whatever product you are building in Nigeria become a global no no clearly I hear you okay hear you. so third on our list is is uh, weak weak local leagues do you understand and that is it that's the problem and that's where I said we need to do something to interest the public what you need to do you don't have Look, what you need is to interest the Nigerian public. Because if the Nigerian public is not interested in what you're doing, you're not going beyond the boundaries of Nigeria. Uh -huh. Do you understand? True. Because the fans are the ones that create the energy and the atmosphere yeah. that the international market wants to be part of. Do you understand? We live in an age where somebody called, Brain Jota came up with one song that's 40 years old, did something small about it, and it, got, it goes global. What, what are you guys... So, you need to put the lead, you need to put some spice in the lead. Yeah, I hear you, you need funding. Do you understand? You need funding. But you, you have some sort of track, at least. You have, you have derailed a few times, but the reality is basketball in Nigeria is big. It's the second, big, second biggest sport in this country. And that's something to build on. Right? Yeah, there, so, there are expectations from yeah. people, yeah. from the fans, from the, from the, uh, from the stakeholders. Mm. Yes. The league was played last year. Mm. The league was played two years ago. Mm. But coming from where we're coming from, mm. that's not the level of league that we should that, that, yeah. that, That's not where we should be now. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But you see, we plod on, we keep going yeah. at it, hoping that, yes, when we. Because let, look, let me tell you, like I said, there are about 44 other federations clamoring for the same oh, yeah, yeah. kind of money so you have to, for. you have to come with, you, have, you have to put your best your a, and your a game yeah and you have to come up with your a game mm. to get the corporates interested in your sport mm. because of the factual uh, stories about mm. what's going on in basketball mm. you understand mm. so you know, we keep going on, on, on all of those things and we we'll keep going like, like i said the league is going to start in a couple of weeks yeah. both male and female yeah. I, that i can assure you yeah okay so the fourth, can I see my slide on, on um, the headwinds, please? Fourth on the list is, is um, inadequate funding. We've spoke, spoken exhaustively about that. Yeah. But to get the right capital, you've got to develop your product to a point where you interest, the, the, you, attract, the, you attract investors yeah. to, to what you're doing. But the, Sorry. And then finally, I think this is a very key point. We have weak brands. In Nigeria, right? They, 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 if you're not in the basketball community, as in you are not, you are not a promoter of the game, mm -hmm. you don't know what the brands are. Do you get? It? People can say, oh, in football there is Bernal Insurance, there is Rangers, there is uh, Shooting Stars. Things can go south and come back again. We we stay there because we have our brands that we all associate with. Many years ago, where are the, there are no brands in basketball? Many, no, 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 that's, not, fans. that's not true. Many years ago, we had the Union Bank. We had the now one, yeah. We had Islanders, yeah. We had, um, so where are they yeah. now? They're defunct. That's the point I'm making. The point I'm making is we had Ben Ellington, we had Rangers, we had they're still there in football. This, this basketball teams are, are defunct like in another that. cloak, yeah. In another cloak, perhaps mm. the Rangers and the, and the managers, yeah. in another cloak, yeah. But you see, basketball, the funding of basketball, mm. trust me, it is as big as football. Mm. Football gets a lot of traction. Mm. I, 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 I tell you a short story. During, I mean, after COVID, mm. FIFA came, gave, went down and gave all of the uh, federations mm. monies. I had, I, I, I made a mistake of asking some of my friends in FIFA. Listen, football has given uh, FIFA has given football money all over the place. They even gave Nigeria money. What are you doing? For basketball, you just you know when someone looks at you and I'm like I think there's something wrong with you, just walks away. You know when we came second week in I mean in Spain, where we came eighth in Spain, we came eighth in Spain. We, as the best African team, we beat Spain, so we beat Argentina, Turkey, and uh, Greece. After, after the event, I, I think yeah, all of the officials said, listen, we're from Africa. You know what we just did. What we are going back to Nigeria mm. next couple of days. Do we have anything in here? Do we have balls? Do we have uh, upright? Do we have anything? No, uh, nothing. Nothing. 
Okay. Uh, okay. And, and, and that's the problem. Your final word, please, because we're about okay. to, yeah, we have to. That's one thing, because this question I asked like 20 years ago, the secretary, the I asked people cross play, spend money, and they go back and get added. Why must he continue? In football, there's something. Then the second thing, talking about brands, hmm. what will also be bad then? You just have there are some things you have to force the teams to do, or you mm. educate them, mm. deal with them. Mm. Rio Hoopers, uh, River Supers, mm. and try in that regard. Mm. You must get a media person, a media team mm. that will project your team. River Supers are doing oh, fantastic. Part of all those things, sorry, yeah. is like to put in that structure. Yeah. Yes. Every team, there must be a team list, there must be a doctor, there must be a coach, they must, must, must have those names. The the all of the um, CVs, yeah. everything must be on, and everybody must have a social media platform. So 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 there's a dashboard where well, we open a dashboard and everybody can see what's mm -hmm. happening in every club. We just put that together so last now. year. Okay, we need to build. It's very important that we build our brands, and building brands has to be a sustainable uh, uh, venture because every every time a brand dies. The fans die with them. Do you That's understand? Correct. So it's we need to do we, yeah, we need to do more with that. Which means also that we need to focus on the domestic league. And mm -hmm. that is where the money is. That's where the TV right is. That's where the merchandising opportunities are. As a matter of fact, your national teams don't account for five percent of your business. I agree with you. Yes. So we are, we are yeah. focusing on our national team. We're losing the business. I agree with you. Do you understand? But see, it's a, I, mean, I mean it's a bit of both. We can, we can have a symbiotic yes. relationship, but we are both clear that where the money is going to come from for the federation, so that you don't need government, you don't need FIBA, you don't need anybody. Part of the witness many years ago, we had DSTV for, for almost 10 years, yeah. and we just let, we let it go. All right, so uh, that's, been, that's been the discussion um, uh, for today, uh, how to make basketball a commercial success in Nigeria. There's, there's so much to talk about when it comes to that. We're still very much in the embryonic, embryonic stage, and we still need to engage a lot more uh, with stakeholders to, in not just basketball, across sports in Nigeria, that's what we do on this program, to find out ways we can grow our sports and turn the sports industry into the mammoth industry that creates jobs and wealth in society that we know that it can. Um, stick with us again. Next week, Tuesday, we're going to be talking more sports and more sports business. Until we meet again next week, thank you, um, thank you, gentlemen, for, for well, I was going to say, ladies, thank you, gentlemen, for making it to the program. It's deeply appreciated. Until we meet thank again you. next week, this is me, Rufo, and Laga saying, be productive, be good, and stay safe.